Hello guys, today I'm going to be making a tutorial on how to make car paints slash liveries in Blender. So basically the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your car model. So any car model will work for this. This method does work better if they're made from a subdivision method. So if they have less vertices, the better. But really even any amount of vertices should work with this. It'll just be harder to select the different faces for it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get your car model. This car model is a 1970 Corvette, which you can purchase in my Gumroad if you want but any car will work for this tutorial. So, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is we're gonna decide how many different sides we want to have the car paint slash design on. So for mine, I don't really have any front design I need, but I do have a left side, a top side, a right side, and a back side. So you're gonna, first thing you're gonna do is figure out how many different sides you want to have the car paint on. And so once you have decided that, we're gonna start making the cameras these cameras are what we're going to be using to project the images on each side of the car. So the first thing we're going to want to do is I'm going to place a camera here on the right side. I'm going to change the camera to an orthographic type mode. And then I'm going to go to camera view, lock camera to view, make sure that this camera that I have now selected, I'm going to name it right side. And I'm going to turn, by clicking this little camera button, it turns it into the main camera. So I'm going to click that. Now I'm going to line up the camera so you can see the right side. Do is go to this orthographic scale and zoom out. So I'm going to turn off lock camera to view. So now that I have that, I have the right side camera set up. I'm going to want to do it to all the other angles. So yep. Yep. Again, I'm going to name this new camera to top side. I'm going to line it up. Looks pretty lined up. And I'm going to click the left side now. Rename it to left side, and then I'm going to go into it and make sure it's lined up. It's lined up. going to duplicate it again, make it the back angle. Rename it to back side and go into it, and I'm going to line it up a bit more. So camera view. So that looks good. Eventually, we're going to need to render these image out. Before I do that, though, I'm going to make sure the shading is all set up. So basically, the only thing you're going to want to do for the shading right now is just make sure that the whole everything that you want painted or to have delivery is going to have the same material. Ideally you'd want it to be a car paint material and I'll link to one in the description. And so the next thing we're going to set up is if you have any mirror modifiers you're going to want to apply those. So as you can see this has a mirror modifier. I'm going to apply that. And I'm also going to take down these subdivision surfaces just a tiny bit right now just to like make the viewport quicker. So I'm going to do that again for this. And also, if you have anything like doors that are one object, you can go into edit mode, select everything, go to mesh, and separate by loose parts. And that just makes it into two objects instead of one object, which is ideal for this tutorial. Now that we've done the setting up bit, what you're going to want to do is to render out all of the images from the different cameras that we made. You're going to want to make sure they render quickly. So you can either set it to EV right here, or you can lower the resolution scale. I'm just going to lower the resolution scale because for some reason my computer doesn't play well with Eevee. <laughs> it works better with Cycle for some reason. So I'm just going to lower the resolution and render it with Cycles. But you can do it with either. Now I'm going to render out an image from each camera view and this is going to create a template for our livery. Make sure that the base resolution for these images is at least 1080 ignoring the resolution scaler. <laughs> So now that we have all of our images, what we're going to want to do is find our image editing software of choice. So I'm using Photoshop. You can use GIMP. Uh, this is really just using basic photo editing tools. So basically all you need is like to be able to make a custom image size and then be able to just modify images to make the actual livery or slash paint job itself. So I'm going to open Photoshop. I'm going to create a new image file. And then I'm going to come to this resolution. So I've already kind of set this up. But basically what you want to do is you want your width to be the width of your images. So we rendered this out at 1920 by 1080 with the resolution uh, scale of 26. The resolution scale doesn't matter. So just take your width of the image and then put that into the width of the Photoshop file. And then you're going to want to take your height of your image, which is your Y. And you're going to want to multiply that by however many angles that you're taking photos with. 
So I have four angles, the back, right, left, and top. But if you, for instance, have five angles because you have the front two, then you would have to multiply your y-axis resolution by five instead of four. So when I multiply 1080 by four, I get uh, 4320. So I set that as my height. So once you create this file, it doesn't matter if the background is a alpha, it doesn't matter what color it is. Basically, you're just gonna wanna put your images that you rendered out into it. So I'm gonna, since mine was so scaled down, I'm gonna have to scale it up about to the right size, it doesn't really matter, and then put it in there. So once you have all your images stacked, what we're going to do is uh, export this, export it at the full resolution, make sure it's 1920 by whatever your uh, height was, and this is my old folder, I'm just going to put this in my new folder, and I'm just going to name it All Images, because it's all the images. And so when I go back into Blender, I'm going to set my material, which is on all of my parts of my car that I want to have paint job, and this is my paint material. So I'm going to delete the default color, and I'm going to import a new, I'm going to add an image. And I'm going to make that image to the All Images file that we just created in Photoshop. So now that we have that, you'll notice that the car has a very weird texture, and that's okay. We're going to start to line up the UVs with those images. So what we're going to want to do is I work, I like to work one angle at a time. So I'm going to start on the right side. I'm going to select that camera. I'm going to click zero to go into the camera view, and I'm going to select my part that I'm going to line up with the UV. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything on this that faces the right side that I would like to have the right side of the paint job. So I'm going to select all of this. Let me see and select all of this. And I'm going to go out of this view and make sure that nothing on the top is selected. So I don't want those faces selected because that's kind of more the top than the side. If something, for instance, is on the top, but you're projecting it from the side view, then it will be a bit stretched and it won't look right. So try and get as much things that are facing the right on the right uh, side. And then if it's on the top, we're going to project that from the top side. So basically, all you got to do is just make sure everything is selected that you want selected. So this seems about right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my right side camera, click U, and project from view. And so once you do that, you're going to see this little thing. Make sure that camera bounds is selected. If it's not selected, reselect it. And then just project from view again. And so once we have that, go into the UV editing and select the all images file. And you'll notice that the UV unwrap that we just did is pretty stretched, but that's because we multiplied the resolution, the vertical resolution by four. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, scale it on the X by four. And you'll notice it's at the right aspect ratio. So I'm going to scale that down now, and I'm going to line it up with where it is on the car. So this takes a bit of messing around with. It's not that hard, though. Just line it up. Make sure all parts of it are lined up. Honestly, that looks pretty freaking good already. So now that I have that, I'm just going to go into the rendered view just to make sure it's all good. So as you can see, the right side is all red. And also, another thing this can show you if you go into the shaded view, is if you missed any faces. So from this I can see I missed a face right here. And another thing you might want to do is to turn off any subdivision surface modifiers that you might have selected. And so I'm going to select this face and this face because obviously those didn't get um, unwrapped. So I'm going to go back to my camera view. You project from view. See they're over here. I'm going to scale on the X by 4. Do that again. And then just line them back up with that part of the image that they correspond to. So now that we're done with that, I'm going to move on to the next thing on the right, which is this door. So again, I'm going to turn off the subdiv. And for this one, I don't actually have to select only the parts that are facing the right side because this door is just one thing. It doesn't have a top. It just has the right side. So I'm going to select everything, go into my camera view, and project from view. Again, I'm going to select everything here, scale on the x-axis by 4, and line it up with the door.
everything looks lined up. And so I'm gonna move on to the next one. So I'm just gonna repeat the same process for this. But this one's a bit interesting. I can show you guys. So you might see that when I select these, and I'm gonna select this too, because this is facing the right. There's some things where you just gotta make a decision whether or not you want it to be on the top or whether you want it to be on the right. So as you can see, this overhanging bit is a 45 degree angle. So you can choose whether you want it to be on the right or on the top view. So I'm gonna choose to put it on the top view just cause that most likely is gonna have a design that corresponds with the top of the paint job. So I'm also gonna deselect that cause as you can see, these bits are pretty much only facing the top. So I'm just gonna unselect those. So also I'm gonna unselect everything over here that I might have accidentally selected. So an easy way to do that is to go into, to click Z to go into wireframe and then just deselect all those. Basically any angle where you don't want it, you're gonna to wanna to take those out. I'm ready to unwrap, so I'm gonna go to zero again. Go into my camera view, unwrap it, project from view, fill an X by four, move it to the proper place. Yep, looks pretty lined up. And so now I'm gonna move on to a different angle. So the angle I'm gonna choose for this, I'm gonna to choose to do the top angle now. It doesn't really matter what order you do the different angles in. Some are easier because you can see where the cutoff points are. So it might be easier doing all the sides and then doing the top, but I'm gonna do the top second. So I'm gonna select the top camera as my thing. Go into this and start selecting all the faces where I want the top of the livery to be. When selecting things, be careful to make them symmetrical and that they're not overlapping with the selections from the previous angles. Okay, once again, once I'm ready to unwrap it, I click U, project from view, and scale on the X by four. And then I'm good. That looks lined up, so I'm gonna do some other parts from the top. Now I'm gonna move on to the left side, repeating what I've done from the previous two angles. <laughs> Now I'm going to move on to my final side, the back side. Now that we have everything lined up, I'm going to re-subdivide all the surfaces again. Make it look good. Now we can start to design the paint job slash livery. So now open Photoshop back up and close down the previous file that we made, but make sure it's saved. Now open the all images file that we made. We're doing this instead of the old file because this is gonna have one layer instead of four layers to work with. Once the file is open, uh, go to the layer settings and set the opacity of the layer to around 50% so we can start designing the livery over the template. So what I do is I like to just use the rectangle tool and just to make like a full color, and I'll just fill it to like whatever color I want it. So I'll make it blue. And I'm gonna set that under this layer so I can see the car on top, so I can line that up. I'm also gonna take off auto select because if you try and move everything, you'll just end up selecting the top. So you're gonna have to just select what you want to be moving on this side. And then you can start making a livery. So I'm gonna make that real quick. When I design my livery, I usually like to take inspiration from real race cars. And uh, so that usually just means getting like the same design uh, and just like blocking that out with the different like tools I have available. So like using the rectangle tool, the circle tool, the text, and also just downloading different like brands, images, and logos from the internet and putting that on the car kind of like stickers. <laughs> when you're done designing the livery, make sure to hide the all images layer and then you can export it. When you're done, remove the all images file from the material and add in your livery design. Now you're done and you can reuse the original template to make as many livery designs as you want. 